Hello, Mike here at Gay from Scratch, and another day has passed, and we have another Godot feature announcement. Yes, you know, Godot has been dominating my video feed lately, and that's because Godot is just firing on all cylinders. As they approach their 3.0 release, we're getting more and more functionality or more and more details of functionality. Now, technically, this isn't something that, um, is new. This was actually part of the alpha I discussed last week, uh, but more details and an implementation of it are now available. And that is that virtual reality has come to the Godot engine. Obviously, it's very early on. I don't know how close to production ready it is, and it is on limited VR devices. Unfortunately, the two that I owned, uh, the Daydream and the uh, Gear VR, are currently not supported. Um, hopefully, that changes in the near future, though. So let's take a look at the announcement behind this functionality, and then we'll jump right in. So basically, uh, this would be today, uh, they announced that Godot 3.0 VR and AR support is coming, and then a couple of the details on it. Now, as they said up here, C-sharp kind of overshadowed this announcement, and that is fair. And another thing about this is it's implemented using GD-Native, which is the uh, bridge between uh, the Godot internal engines and native code, such as you know C++, et cetera. And the really nice thing about GD-Native is that it allows you to um, easily implement third-party libraries, such as, for example, um, virtual reality support. And that's exactly what's happening. Now, behind the scenes, it's implemented as a uh, server in the architecture. So AR VR server is implemented on the back end. And you have to implement this code. We'll come back to that in a second when we look at the implementation. But there's only a few lines of code to get VR up and going. Now, on top of that, you've also got some VR node requirements. We'll also look at that in a moment. Basically, you need to have an origin, a special camera, and a couple of other settings. We'll look at those when we get into the example. Now, when we talk about what actually um, is implemented here, uh, as I said earlier on, there's no mobile support. So if you're on a Gear VR or a Daydream headset, um, the guy developing this stuff doesn't have access to those platforms. So if you wanna see it happen, maybe kick in uh, support there. I'm actually considering it, but I don't think I can do it right now. Uh, but if you can, they definitely would appreciate it and would get those platforms happening faster. Uh, I don't know actually if he's got, um, oh, he doesn't own an Android device. Okay, that makes it kind of tricky because then he has to get his hands on a phone as well. Uh, but anyways, they have implemented Open VR and Open HMD. So the two major um, compatible headsets out there. I know that Open VR works with HTC Vive uh, and the Oculus Rift. So pretty much all of them that matter. And Open HMD, I also think works with those, but also with the uh, PSVR and the new uh, Windows headsets as well. Now, again, this is very early on, very experimental. Now, the cool thing is. Um, if you do want to get going with it, there is an example, and that's what we're going to use in a second. Uh, also, there is AR Kit support. Now, AR Kit is Apple's um, augmented reality uh, kit. I think it's overhyped, to be honest. Uh, I think this has been around forever. But anyways, uh, they have implemented support for it, or it is capable of supporting it. They, however, haven't because of some of the restrictions that iOS 11 puts on it. Uh, you have to compile against iOS 11, and that means that you can't run it on the iPhone 5. Obviously, that is a bit of an issue. Um, they've also got some um, rules against uh, dynamic compiling, so a DLL implementation is not feasible on Apple, um, which is how this is currently implemented. So there are some gotchas, but they are not um, deal breakers per se. So in the future, Godot might be capable of doing AR kit development. Uh, but anyways, to loop back to what we we're showing today, uh, if you come up here, if you have Windows like myself, uh, there is a implementation of OpenVR and a demo project that you can get started with. Basically, go ahead and download this guy. I uh, will come down to your download folder as, oh, that's not it. Uh, this guy as this zip file right here. What you want to do is go ahead and extract that out. And what you've got here basically is a version of Godot, plus it has the uh, open VR implementation built for us and a demo project. So just go ahead and fire that guy up once you've downloaded it. Or you can, of course, if you're on another platform, uh, you can use the other link to build it from source. Uh, this nicely is a provided binary if you're in Windows land like myself. And once that is fired up, what you'll want to do, I've already done it, but you'll want to go ahead and import in that demo. Uh, you can find it in the demo folder right here. Just go on in and press uh, open on it and it'll import it in. I've already done it, so we can just go ahead and open it up. And this is an OpenVR sample done in the Godot AIM engine. Now, unfortunately, I don't have a compatible uh, device, so I can't really show you much. I can't run this to guarantee it works. I'm going to take their word for it. However, again, if we go back to this document, which I will link down below if you want more details, if you want to download this for yourself, etc., there is a in-depth 30-minute um, explanation of everything that's going on behind the scenes here. So if you want more details on the code we're talking about here, 
definitely check out that video. Um, I will link this article so it has the video in it if you want more information. Anyways, here we are back to our project. Now what you need to do is attach a script to your root node like this guy right here has been. And this is that code you have to fire up. So basically you have to fire up the server of the interface that you want to use, OpenVR or OpenHMD for today, hopefully Daydream and GearVR sometime in the future. And then you initialize the uh, headset and you call uh, git viewport ARVR equals true and bang, you now have virtual reality support. And really that's the extent of it. It's pretty cool. Um, now I did say there are some node requirements that have to be in your scene. Uh, you need to have an origin. Um, basically this tells VR where the origin of your world is. Um, and it is the root node for your VR camera, which you also need to provide. Um, this is just like the normal camera, uh, though obviously this is for uh, VR. It has a couple of, um, actually no, settings look pretty much the same as a normal camera. Um, so this is the special node needed for you know your, your head display. And then you've got here um, controller support. Uh, so this would be, I, I don't know if it's marked as the left or right controller, uh, but these give you, you know, if you've got the, um, Oh God, I don't remember the names. Basically, HTC Vive and the Oculus Rift both have their own implementation for 3D virtual controllers for VR. And this is how you support them. So you can see we got controller ID one and controller ID two. And if we open one of these up, it's got an attached script and you can see the underlying logic they're using for controlling, um, you know, when buttons are pressed, etc., on these controllers or when they're moved in the world, etc. So you can see here, VR support is actually coming with uh, Godot 3.0. Uh, you can play around with it today. As we mentioned earlier on, there is implementation for OpenVR and OpenHMD, uh, which pretty much is all of your mainstream desktop devices today supported, including all their various different controllers. So this is an excellent development. Um, VR support is one of those tick box features that most modern 3D game engines are going to need to have. Even if VR itself may have been a bit, it may be a little premature, but it's probably not the success a lot of people thought it would be. It still is it's fundamental to a lot of, you know, again, it's a checkbox feature that game engines are expected to have. So it's awesome to see Godot get the support right up front. And it's cool to see it being done in this server-based modular way. So new, um, new device implementations can be added as they're created. Or if someone steps up that has, you know, one of those devices I mentioned that aren't supported like the Daydream or the Gear VR, uh, someone else can add support for it using this existing framework. This also does a wonderful job of showcasing what GD Native actually brings to the equation. You know, before you would have had to extend this and build this directly into the engine, and then you've got the maintenance issues of that, etc. This shows a nice, clean, modular, extensive extensibility approach to the Godot engine and the strengths it's got there. There. So this is pretty awesome news. Now, I'm gonna just kind of two for this video. So that's VR support coming in Godot. Another major feature, and I don't think this actually made Alpha 2, but Godot 3.0 is switching to support for the bullet physics engine. Um, so the back end support, instead of being done using their in-house logic, and I'm gonna be honest here, the Godot physics implementation when I worked with it was problematic. So it's nice to see them going to pretty much the industry standard. And the bullet physics engine is used uh, in a lot of systems. Hey, let me just bring up the wiki page on that. So I know it's used in some commercial engines. I'm not remembering exactly what they are, but it's been used in so many different commercial games. So you see here, uh, Dirt, uh, which is a really high fidelity physics um, based racer from Codemasters, uh, Trials HD, Grand Theft Auto 4. So you've got some pretty serious commercial games that have been used, made using it. A number of movies have, and then we get into um, basically uh, Blender used it, Cinema 4D, Houdini, Lightwave, Moto. Um, so it's used in a lot of you know commercial 3D applications and in a lot of different game engines. So including the Zenko game engine. And part of me was thinking that there is bullet support in Unreal Engine, but I might be making that up. But anyways, bullet um, bullet uh, physics is definitely one of those um, industry standards. It's cool to see them, um, you know, open going with this open source solution that is, you know, more robust, more tested, and moving away from their proprietary solution, which didn't make a whole lot of sense to exist when there is a great and Zlib license, so very liberal usage licensed uh, physics engine out there that, as you can see, is very much, oh, Rocket League. 
I should have got that one right up front. Probably the most um, exciting physics-based game that people are actually playing these days. So this is a very strongly supported engine, and it's very cool to see uh, that it was integrated using the Godot engine. Um, and it's going to be replaced in their back-end system. So if you're interested in this, I will also link this um, down below so you can learn a bit more about that announcement. Now, uh, his work was just merged and will be present in Godot 3.0, so I don't believe uh, it's in um, Alpha 2. Uh, it's going to be coming in a future version. And the Godot old physics engine will be provided side by side, but will eventually be removed. Um, and really, unless you're supporting a legacy game, that shouldn't be bad news to anyone. I think it's probably safe to say that Bullet is an upgrade in every way. So that's a pair of really cool announcements coming out of uh, the Godot game engine. Uh, VR support and brand new, better physics engine. Uh, like I said, Godot is firing on all cylinders. It's an awesome engine. If you haven't checked it all out already, I do recommend you do so. And if you're interested, I have a full tutorial series here. Uh, I'll link that down below as well. Plus, once uh, Godot 3.0, uh, we get to about, say, probably the release candidate phase, I'm going to start doing a couple tutorial series as well. Anyways, I hope you enjoyed that video. Um, we're going to get into some stuff that's not Godot related soon, I promise you. Uh, but like I said, they're dominating the headlines lately, so I got to cover it. And I hope you did enjoy that. If you did, please do click like. And um, if you're into this kind of channel, uh, do hit subscribe. Hopefully we'll find stuff for you to love here. And if you're really into this channel, uh, please do consider checking out my Patreon. It goes a long way towards helping me with this stuff. All right, I'll see you all later. Goodbye.